It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now! I'm starving! On the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby! It is the Fantasy Feast Podcast presented by DraftKings. I love DraftKings, and I absolutely love DraftKings best ball. I want you. Uh, two things about DraftKings best ball, just to start the show. We are doing my offensive line rankings today. Get excited. We'll dive into them momentarily. Uh, people love them for real football. People love them for fantasy reasons. We'll talk about why momentarily. But I got a couple things to say about DraftKings best ball. Number one, We're trying to do the July draft. Two of you that are in it haven't signed up yet, even though I've emailed you the link. So check your email and sign up. We got Giancarlo Libertino, Brian Bow, Robert Ober, Jeannie Notch, Jason Pierce, Kevin Dobes, Hugo Matthew, Nathan Chidoni, Mike Shirk, Justin Christopher. Check your emails. Sign up or else I'm going to have to give this spot to somebody else because two of you still haven't signed up because Joe and I are anxious to do the July best ball draft over at DraftKings. And then I already have the first two contestants for the August best ball. We're going to do an August best ball. Joe Silva and Brent Hunt both signed up for the Warby Parker home try on. Look, there's a lot of different things you can do. Today, I'm going to tell you about a free Crocs free-to-play NBA draft pool. Literally free-to-play. It's a draft pool. You maybe win some money, and you can get into the August best ball draft as a result. It's that easy. Or Keeps, which I talk about at least once a month because Keeps has been amazing for me, and I think it could be for you as well. But anyway, the next four episodes, I'm giving out two spots. And our August best ball draft. So engage. Get in here. You're going to want to be a part of the best ball because best ball is the, wait for it, best ball. I'm Ross Tucker. I think most of you know that. At Ross Tucker NFL, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. You can always watch the show via YouTube, YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. And then all of our shows are available at Ross Tucker Pod. My normal co-host is Joe Dolan from FantasyPoints.com. Joe is on assignment this week. And I don't really know what that means other than I like saying someone is on assignment. However, we still have a Fantasy Points presence because I went ahead and wrote about my fantasy offensive line rankings for fantasy points to come. Really not even my fantasy offensive line rankings, just my offensive line rankings for fantasypoints.com. And so that's what we're going to do today. And my co-host, none other than the greatest producer in the business, Brian Neal. Check him out at Ross Tucker Pod. Brian will go over my tiers, kind of like tiers of Evan. Back in the day, except it's Tears of Ross, Tuck's Tears. You could do that, Brian, between tears. Tuck's Tears. You don't have that. You could just say Tuck's Takes. But we'll go over all the teams. Here's what's important, okay? To have an idea of the different tiers. We got elite, above average, average, below average, poor. The elite and the poor, you really want to know. It's really going to have an impact on the fantasy guys you draft, best ball or otherwise. And then the other ones, you just need to be aware of it, right? You know, I'm not saying you should pick a guy or not based solely on the offensive line. That's stupid. But I think it can be a differentiator. I think it can be a tiebreaker a lot of times. If you're not sure between two guys, the guy with the clearly better offensive line, he's going to have a higher floor and a higher ceiling. So something you should absolutely keep in mind. So at any rate, Bri, without further ado, Let's dive into it. All right. With your elite tier, let's start with the Cleveland Browns and the New Orleans Saints. 
Right, and I should mention, you know, the cool part about this is I have a pretty good idea going into the season, but things change. You know, I thought the Steelers would be a top 10 offensive line last year. Instead, they were one of the worst in the NFL, and they've changed out the whole unit, essentially, as a result. I thought Cleveland would be good. My question marks were Jedrick Wills moving from right tackle to left tackle, and Wyatt Teller at right guard. And Jedrick Wills, by the way, doing that as a rookie who hadn't actually played at all at left tackle, and there was not much of an offseason program because of COVID. Well, I thought the Browns were the best offensive line in the NFL last year. Wills was good, probably not great, but good enough. And Wyatt Teller turned into one of the best guards in the entire NFL. They've got all five guys back. They're all at least average to above average. They've got a terrific offensive line, good receivers, good tight ends, good quarterback, good running. I mean, look, the Browns are good, and their offensive line is a big reason why, why I have them number one ranked. In the above average categories, there are eight of them. So we'll go team by team and we'll start off with the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Did I miss the Saints? Maybe I missed you you mentioning the Saints. My second elite team is the New Orleans Saints. Again, all five back. The tackles are studs. I thought Armstead wasn't quite as good last year as he normally is. But, but Ram checks a dude. And I really am excited to see Eric McCoy – and Cesar Ruiz, you know, in years uh, three and two, those guys are some powerful dudes. I, I think that the Saints will have an elite off- offensive line. I think they have to. Michael Thomas is hurt. No more Drew Brees. Those guys are going to have to step up. As for the Bucks, I have them higher than other people, Bry, And I do because I love Ryan Jensen. First of all, I love their interior offensive line. You got – two D2s and a D3 guy in their interior offensive line. I mean, that's amazing, number one. Number two, I love the way that group plays, and they're led by Jensen, the center. I don't know what nickname he has, but he's my favorite player in the entire league. If you want to watch a guy play offensive line the way I think the position should be played, watch Ryan Jensen from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Indianapolis Colts. So uh, the above average teams are all good, but they kind of have one thing preventing them from being elite. For the Bucks, it was primarily Donovan Smith. I just, he's got some lapses that bother me. For the Colts, it's left tackle. Anthony Costanzo has retired. Uh, eventually, I think it'll be Eric Fisher, but he's coming off that torn Achilles in the AFC Championship game. So then you're talking about Julian Davenport and a bunch of journeymen trying to hold it down until Fisher's ready. So that's why I can't quite put the Colts in the elite category. All right. How about the Philadelphia Eagles? You know, I've talked about this a lot on other shows. You know, it's like how quickly people forget, Bri. I mean, 2019, I thought the Eagles had the best offensive line in the NFL. Lane Johnson was awesome. Brandon Brooks was awesome. Jason Kelsey was awesome. Sayamalu was good, and even left tackle Peters was solid that year. If Brooks and Johnson are healthy, this is a top 10 offensive line all day. And if the left tackle, whether it's Dillard or Mylotta, and I'm confident at least one of them will step up and play at a high level, it's a top five offensive line, which is why I have them here at five. Dallas Cowboys are next. So it's all about injuries, Bri. I mean, it's all about injuries for those guys. Uh, They had their top three guys, Lyle Collins, Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, all go down to injury last year. All of those guys are very good players. If they can stay healthy this year, uh, there's no reason why they can't be an elite offensive line again. But they got to stay healthy. That's the question. The New England Patriots. So losing Joe Tooney is a big loss. Um, with him going to the Chiefs for a lot of money. But Onwenu played really good at tackle last year. 
Now they'll put on Wenu at left guard to go with Shaq Mason at right guard. Those are some powerhouse guards. Andrews is solid at center. Isaiah Wynn did some good things at left. I mean, the real question mark to me is whether or not they can get Trent Brown to play at a high level again now that he's back in New England at right tackle. That's that's the major question mark for the Patriots, which obviously they feel good about. What about the San Francisco 49ers? Do you remember the San Francisco treat, Bri? Sure. Rice, Rice Aroni. Aroni. Rice Aroni, of course. Is that still around or did they give up? Don't know. Don't know. I mean, they used to advertise heavily. I can't remember the last time I even heard anyone mention Rice Aroni. They were big sponsors of uh, like game shows. Like if you were the runner up, you'd get, you know, Rice Aroni, the San Francisco treat. That or Turtle Wax. Yes. That's such a great, that's such a great. A great thing for uh, for an advertiser. Do they, I, I mean, do they even have game shows anymore? Of course they do, sure. Price is Right still on the air. The Price is Wrong, Bob. What movie, Bri? Happy Gilmore. Yes! <laughs> yes, I love when you prove yourself. All right, Niners. I think they upgraded at center and right guard with Alex Mack. And I think it'll be Aaron Banks at right guard. That's big. He's big. That's big. I know Emory Hunt on the College Draft Podcast really like Aaron Banks. Because of that, to go along with what they already had at tackle and Lake and Tomlinson, they should be very good. Los Angeles Rams. So here's the question there, Brian. They got all the same guys back. But what about the new O-line coach? I don't know what happened where Aaron Cromer moved on from the Rams. It's a little bit weird to me that Aaron Cromer moved on. They had a good offensive line last year. I don't know what happened there, um, whether it's professional or personal, but their new offensive line coach, Kevin Carberry, the onus is really on him to make sure that group is playing at a high level because they played pretty darn well last year. Last team in the above average category is the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, so I don't think I've ever seen a team throw this – many resources at the offensive line. I mean, they draft Creed Humphrey. They draft Trey Smith. They trade for Orlando Brown. They sign Joe Tooney. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. They sign Kyle Long. They are throwing – they get Laurent Duvernay-Tardif back. I mean, they are throwing resources at it. But it takes a little bit of time sometimes for those guys to mesh. And so we'll see how long it takes them to be able to mesh. All right, on to your average categories. Uh, the Detroit Lions kick it off. So they've got some good players, um, clearly, right? Ragnow, Taylor Decker, but the guards are still kind of an issue. We'll see what Jackson and, and Vitae can do. And then even Panay Sewell, like he wasn't a perfect prospect. Now they're moving him to the right side. So we'll see. I mean, maybe he'll be like Tristan Wirfs and he'll immediately be one of the best right tackles. Maybe he'll be like Andrew Thomas and he'll struggle. You know, that remains to be seen. The Arizona Cardinals. So the Cardinals return both guards, both tackles, and then they got Rodney Hudson at center, who's a big upgrade. So Cardinals have a chance for sure to be above average in my mind. The Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills. Do you remember, Bri, where Buffalo Bills comes from? It was a family thing, right? Yes, good, Bri. Um, my wife's uh, cousin, Luke, when he was a little boy, would say, the Buffalo Bills, when I played for them. He's like 20 years old now. Like, uh, it, It's amazing how things change. So they've got the same guys back, and they've got decent depth with Butker and Bates. Uh, I think they and, and Jordan Devy, Forrest Lamp, I think they have a pretty decent chance to be above average as well. Baltimore Ravens. Well, so the Ravens are interesting. Uh, the Ravens got Ronnie Stanley coming back off of injury. Center and left guard are kind of question marks, you know, with Bradley Bozeman likely to have one of those spots, I would imagine. But they're still sort of question marks. And then the right side, They've got 
Zeitler and Villanueva. So they just kind of got a lot of moving parts in there. Nothing is really settled. I mean, I guess Zeitler and Villanueva are, but they're still coming to a new team. So that's why the, the Ravens aren't quite as high in my category as other people have them. The Tennessee Titans. It's amazing how many Titans fans were so upset by my rankings. You know, they posted the rankings to fantasypoints.com, and Titans fans were – they were the most vocal. They feel really good about their offensive line. My question to them is still the right tackle position. Kendall Lamb or Dylan Redunce? Plus, Taylor Lewan always gets hurt. I, I, I mean, look, Derrick Henry had a great year. The offense was humming. I understand their concern, but – I got to go by what I see. And what I see, Bri, with my hair, I see results. And I see results from keeps. I literally had a doctor who said to me, listen, when I was talking about my hair loss, there's two FDA-approved drugs that he recommends. One is a pill you take in the morning. You guys have seen the commercials for it. The other one is a, a topical solution that people are aware of. Um, you know, it's minoxidil, right? You can, you can use minoxidil on top of your head. Um, th the thing is it works. I mean, that's why they're FDA approved. The problem is a lot of guys wait till it's too late. You wait too long. If I had, if I could do one thing over again, Brian, I was started at like 25 and I'd have a, I'd have more hair than I have now. I don't think I started really until 32, 30, probably been about 10 years now. And I get all of it from Keeps now, which is amazing. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash Feast to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Feast to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Feast. The Green Bay Packers are next. So uh, Aaron Rodgers back. Um, I told you he would be, if you read my story last year, D last week at DK nation, I told you that would be the case. So you should read my stories at DK nation that I post on all my social platforms. I got another one coming up today about Belichick's biggest miscalculation ever. Packers should have a pretty good line, but Bakhtiari is coming off the torn ACL and they lost Corey Lindsley to free agency to the chargers. So center's kind of a question mark. Guards kind of a question mark. Ta I mean, they got they got a bunch of things that are not exactly set in stone. I'm kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt because of Jenkins and Bakhtiari. Washington football team. Just a lot of movement, a lot of moving parks there. They bring flowers back. You know, they do have Rulie at center and my boy Brandon Sheriff at guard making $18 million, over $18 million this year, Bri to play guard for one season. Like I got to I got to be I got to keep it real with the listeners, Bry. I, I go back and forth between being really happy for him and super jealous. 18 million dollars to play I that that was my position. I played guard. I started more than a season's worth of games. $18 million. Wow. Anyway, I think they got a pretty good group. We'll see how Cosme and Leno fit in. The Los Angeles Chargers are next. Everybody's different, Brian. I mean, the whole group. And they've invested resources. Filer and uh, – actually, Bulaga's back. But Filer and Lindsley. And they draft for Sean Slater. Still not signed, by the way. Um they should be improved, but again, I can't make you above average or certainly not elite with that many question marks and that many new faces. Seattle Seahawks. Well, you should say they're number 19, bro. You can give the number too. Also gives me a little bit more of a breather. All right. Number 19, the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> you have a breather? You know what's funny about that, Brian? I almost get lightheaded sometimes when I talk that long and that, like, it's like I'm not getting enough oxygen. 
I get a little lightheaded. Anyway, uh, my notes for the Seahawks are shut up, Russell. They're fine. They're not a great offensive line. They're not a bad offensive line. They're fine. He's out here complaining. Drives me nuts. So that's my notes for the Seahawks. Shut up, Russell. Number 20, the Houston Texans. So Texans were better last year than I thought they'd be, Bri. And they've got competition everywhere. Really at every position on the roster. I give Casario a lot of credit for that. O-line's no different, man. I mean, they got like, I don't know, almost 10 guys that could be legit starters. They'll see who buys into the culture. They'll see who's still got who's playing at a high level, and they'll get rid of the other dudes. Number 21, it's the New York Jets, and they start off with the below average category. Jets fans not happy. Listen, I know you got Morgan Moses, but there's a reason why the Washington football team moved on from him. I'm glad you got Elijah Barrett Tucker. I'm glad you're investing resources into the position, but they still got to go out and do it. Barrett Tucker still a rookie. Becton was hurt most of last year. Like, let's see him do it as a group. Number 22, the Jacksonville Jags. What a what a bad look for the Jags, Brian. They got all five guys back, and I still have them below average, primarily because their tackles are huge disappointments to me. I, I mean, I it's a bad look for an offensive line coach. I don't even know who their offensive line coach is right now, but those guys have not improved. Cam Robinson, Jawan Taylor, they're not getting better. That's a reflection of the offensive line coach. Number 23, the Denver Broncos. So Garrett Bowles, what he did last year is quite remarkable. As for the Broncos, I like some of their dudes, like Glasgow, Reisner, but center's still a question mark. That's why they drafted Miners and right tackle. You know, having Bobby Massey in there to the Jawan James, we'll see how Bobby does. 24, it's the Atlanta Falcons. Alex Mack is gone. Look, they've invested way too many first-round picks to be below average. Way too many. Lindstrom's fine. They need McGarry to step up. They need McGarry to have like a Bowles-like epiphany this season. Number 25, the Las Vegas Raiders. A lot of changes, Bry. I mean, you got Incognito and Colton Miller back, but then you get rid of Rodney Hudson, you get rid of Gabe Jackson, you get rid of Trent Brown. They say they're better. Uh, I will believe it when I see it. Number 26, the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings. Again, another team trying to invest the necessary resources to improve there. I'd like to see them improve. I mean, they've got... Their old line coach is up in the air. They're supposed to getting rid of Dennison because he won't get the vaccine. That doesn't help. And then Darisau, their first round pick, presumably their left tackle, wasn't practicing in June because of the core muscle surgery he had back in January. I've had that surgery. Not being able to practice five months later. They said scar tissue. Doesn't sound right to me, Bri. That sounds iffy. That sounds iffy enough to put him in the below average category. Also in the below average category, number 27, the Chicago Bears. I, th I just think offensive tackle is an issue. And I, I know the Bears are excited about their team this year, but their interior offensive line is fine. It's not great. It's fine. And then their tackles, Tevin Jenkins? And uh, I don't know, maybe another rookie at right tackle or maybe Elijah Wilkinson. No, thank you. Number 28, the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, number 28. What does that remind you of, Bri? Power Rankings Tuesdays. Bri, you are on it today, dude. Power Rankings Tuesday. By the way, today is a Tuesday. So we are probably, power. what, like five or six weeks away from Power Rankings Tuesday. We're like six weeks away from daily Ross Tucker football podcast. Daily. Get excited. And then, by the way, starting next week, we get into Joe 
Dolan's rankings and tiers. Very important. Rankings are one thing, but knowing the tiers, that's how NFL teams do it. If you've got guys bunched together, it's important. Uh, Dolphins have a lot of bodies, a lot of young guys, but I don't know how many of them are actually good yet. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting a lot of competition, a lot of resources, but I don't know how many of them are actually good so far. All right, so we've gone from elite, above average, average, below average, and now the bottom of the barrel. Number 29, the Carolina Panthers. You know what else is poor, Bri? How many people don't realize how awesome Crocs are? Visit Crocs.com to take your pick of wildly comfortable and lightweight clogs, sandals, and slides. You can ask my wife. I wear Crocs 95% of the time when I have something on my feet. Unless I'm barefoot, I've got Crocs. I love the slides. I love the sandals. I love, um, they've got like cool, like sneaker type shoes. The thing, it's the rubber, dude. The rubber is the key. It gives you more cushion for the pushing. It has done wonders for my back. Speaking of my back, don't make me carry you guys over to the Crocs Hoops Draft Prediction Challenge. It's coming, and dare we say, free to play on DraftKings.com. All you do is go to the page on draft day and see how well your pick predictions hold up to the real ones. Visit DraftKings.com slash Crocs on Thursday, two days from the day, to make your basketball draft predictions. DraftKings.com slash Crocs. It's free. I mean, what a fantastic way for you to get into the best ball draft at DraftKings by going to DraftKings.com slash Crocs and doing the free-to-play game, draft prediction game. I didn't mention the Panthers, did I? Not yet. Uh, I mean, they went out of their way to sign Cam Irving and Pat Elfline to be starters. Uh, I think those guys are average at best. I don't really get it. Number 30, the Cincinnati Bengals. I think Riley Reef is fine at right tackle, but my boy Jonah's got to play better at left tackle. And I think there's the jury's still way out on Jackson Carmen at right guard, the former Clemson left tackle that is a rookie. I, I don't I don't really know that they're even that much better. I mean, it was a huge issue last year, but I don't even know that they're that much better. Number 31, the New York Giants. So they lose Zeitler. I guess Andrew Thomas was a little better at the end of the year. I mean, I don't know, bro. They don't have very many good players up there. Who's even average of that group? They got maybe a couple averages and, and a bunch of below averages. It's not good. Let's see if Solder bounces back. All right, it's finishing it off. Number 32, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So my boy Albert Breer made it sound like they might start a rookie at left tackle and the Moore kid. And a rookie at center, they better be good. Those kids, I mean, a rookie center and a rookie left tackle, plus the other spots are all kind of, you'll see if Trey Turner didn't play very well for the Chargers last year. You know, we'll see how Dotson does at left guard. We'll see at right guard if it's Chooks or Ben. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of questions there. My guess is they'll end up not being the worst, but for right now, that's where I got to put them. Get fired up for next week and Joe's Tears of Joe, Tears of Dolan. Would you know my name? Do -do -do -do. And please, get in this best ball draft. Just take advantage of the Keeps offer. Take advantage of the Crocs offer. Warby Parker free home try-on. I mean, there's a million things you can do. Send it to me, Ross at RossTucker.com. And get in my belly or at least in my August best ball draft. I'm stuffed. We're done. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker football podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft, all available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.
A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 